you're now going to move from two systems where we're really into the perceptions that re re that result from them. So with vision, we we like to see we like to perceive the visual world. We like to see a beautiful scene. We like to see a beautiful mountain or uh, a, a, the lake on a sunny day. For hearing, we absolutely like to, we like to hear the orchestra. We like to hear music. We like to hear uh, each other uh, speak. We like to uh, talk. So their perception is extremely important in both vision and, uh, and hearing. And now, we're going to move on to somatosensory system. And there is a, there's some perception that's important or, or useful. Uh, you got to know which side is, wh whether you're wearing burlap or, or silk, whether, you're, uh, whether you have the matte or the glossy side uh, of paper. Um, you have to make these uh, distinctions, but um, and you want to, you know, you want to sleep on, on nice, smooth uh, sheets. But much more, much more importantly, the somatosensory system serves the motor system. And, and the same is true of the vestibular system. So we have moved from, from two systems, vision and hearing, where the dominant output is perception, to two sensory systems, somatosensory and vestibular, where the dominant output is movement. So somatic sensation and, and the vestibular system are serving the motor system. They are serving it. You don't, they're, they're doing it so seamlessly that you don't even realize it. And one way we do not understand this is through a few cases. And um, one which has been written about is the case of Ian Waterman. And there are two books that talk about uh, uh, Ian Waterman. The first, they're both by Jonathan Cole. They're both worth reading. The first one is Pride in a, in a Daily Marathon. And the second is a, a, a more recent update to Ian Waterman's uh, condition called Losing Touch. Uh, I recommend them both. Well, first of all, what happened to Ian Waterman was that at the age of 19, he had a virus. And at the end of the virus, he, could fee he, had, he lost all touch and proprioception. So he lost um, all, he had pain and temperature sensation uh, that he still has, but he lost all touch and proprioception below the neck. And the first thing is that he couldn't, he couldn't sit up. He's in the ambulance riding to the hospital, and he, he could not react to the ambulance moving around. He just fell over. He slowly taught himself how to walk. He slowly taught himself how to do things such as grip a pencil. Um, it's remarkable that he was able to do this. It, he was very resourceful. There are maybe a dozen people uh, with this acquired condition in the world, and he's the only one that moves around without the assistance of a wheelchair. Um, and I should say that when the lights go out, uh, when the lights went out initially, he completely fell to the floor. So. Nothing, nothing worked without him visually seeing it. That's because he has no automatic information, touch or proprioception. What would happen to us if we had no to touch and proprioception? Well, we also would not be able to make the movements that we make because we would have no feedback. We wouldn't be able to grip something. So you think that if somebody is, is, is losing grip, that they're, they're clumsy, all of a sudden, mom or dad becomes clumsy and is dropping things. You think, oh, well, they must have a motor problem. But the fact is that this could be a somatosensory problem because the grip is defined by the somatosensory system. You have to know how hard to grip in order to hold it. You c without the somatosensory system, you could not grip an egg. You would either drop it or you'd crush it. So, the somatosensory system is a, is a slave to the motor system. It is absolutely true that um, without the somatosensory system, without in particular the touch and proprioception, the ability to walk is impaired, the ability to grasp is impaired, so that there can be a sensory neuropathy that results in clumsiness. There is a condition called tabus dorsalis, which occurs in uh, 
in syphilis uh, where there's no, the dorsal columns degenerate. So there's no light touch proprioceptive information, no vibration information. And in these individuals, walking takes on a very particular appearance. They really bang on, they bang their foot on the ground and that um, makes enough of a jar that they feel it either through pain or they hear it through, through hearing. But they can't just gently put their foot down because they get no information through light touch and proprioceptive uh, pathways. So this, um, so the critical function of the somatosensory system is to serve the motor system. We'll look at that when we talk about the motor system. Here, what we're actually going to do is talk about pain. So while it may not be the core uh, raison d'etre for the somatosensory system, it is the core reason that is going to, core somatosensory reason that is going to drive a person to seek medical help. So we will spend the rest of this um, series of videos talking about pain. Yes.